Welcome to the CNC Connection, an all-in-one podcast that touches upon a variety of topics ranging from sports to TV shows. Here are your hosts, the non-experts on everything, Colin and Corey. Hey guys, welcome to the CNC Connection. Uh, it's Corey, Colin, and Joe tonight. Uh, we're today we're discussing uh, Breaking Bad season five, episode three, Hazard Pay. Uh, welcome on, guys. Uh, Colin, initial thoughts. What, where would you rate this episode with uh, the other two this season? Um, I think it was probably the, uh, I don't know, I want to say like least suspenseful and it was probably not my favorite episode of the season, but it was, um, it like split up into two parts where they got the business going first part. And then the second part was, um, a lot of more, like a lot of better scenes I thought with, uh, some suspense building between Marie. I thought that was Marie and Skylar scene was pretty good. And then, uh, Walt, you had to see Walt do a few manipulating things. So all in all, it was like a two part season to me or episode and I kind of liked it. Yeah, what do you think, Joe? Yeah, I liked it. Um, sorry about that. Um, it was, um, yeah, it was. It seemed to be one of those episodes they used to like build uh, build the story. Hold on, hold on a second. Elvis wants to enter his opinion. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's Joe's dog. In case everyone doesn't know. Um, what did you think, Court? Uh, well, I thought like all these episodes, like I can, you can mold them all together, I guess, because they're all like really entertaining episodes. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like season one or two where it kind of dragged down to parts. Like there haven't, hasn't really been any dr- boring scenes, I guess. Like yeah, there wasn't a lot of suspense going on in this episode, but it was still really entertaining to watch. Like you know, how this whole enterprise takes off, kind of. Yeah, it, it, the, I feel like all these episodes are necessary, but they're not gonna be look. I'm not gonna look back and be like, yeah, that's why I like Breaking Bad, you know? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, there hasn't been a huge payoff, but it's building up to the payoff, right? You know what I mean? And I thought like a lot happened this episode. I didn't think they'd go, like, be done with our first cook already, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know how it works in the in the drug world, but I was surprised <laughs> they had the the money already to. Uh, I mean, I guess the dealers would just front them their money. And they're responsible for selling it later, but um, yeah, I don't know how that works. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it seemed like a pretty quick turnaround from uh, uh, cooking to uh, getting paid and starting the business too. I mean, they they found a place, they uh, figured out how the semantics and whatnot, and they cooked and they got paid all in one episode. I just didn't think it was going to happen that fast. But that now that, now that leads five episodes until this uh, half season ends, I guess. So a lot can happen now. Yeah, and we, don't, and we don't really know how much time passed be, from, uh, you know, the the, right. the how much right. time expired for that episode. You know, mm-hmm. it may it may have been weeks. You know, after yeah. they cooked. I mean, we and, don't know, but but um, I I just think a lot, like you said, a lot happened in here. A lot of small things, but really some disturbing stuff. Like yeah, like, very significant. Like he's moving back in, and um, <laughs> yeah, I thought he was there already. Yeah, I, I forgot about the too. whole condo thing too. I mean, he's basically been living there. We haven't seen the condo yet this season, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, last episode he got in bed with her, yeah. and uh, which was creepy and disturbing. <laughs> but, yeah, but um, yeah, I thought he, I thought he had already moved in, but um, yeah, and the, the the tour of the facilities, I thought that was kind of. I don't know. Um, it kind of—I guess it kind of—it was like a almost like everyone has been building it up this whole season where they're going to cook next. It was kind of like right. just playing yeah. after that a little bit. Yeah, I almost thought they were going to start uh, cooking at the car wash. It seems like that'd be a d- cool place to do it. I mean, with all the chemicals and whatnot. Yeah, I was thinking that too. I thought yeah. that's where they're going to end up. Yeah, but I guess uh, this show is kind of like. Uh, they must have like some kind of drug dealers informing Vince Gilligan or something, because like who thinks of uh, <laughs> this uh, the strategy that they came up with, like with a bug b- b- bombing house on the on the road, mobile kind of. Cook, I feel know? I feel like that would be such a pain in the ass to like set it up every time, but it's you know, be like a two-hour setup, it's crazy. Yeah, and that's why they have to make small batches. Yeah. Yeah, I was but just yeah, like, it does seem kind of crazy. Yeah. I was just more like, and like uh, right when they go in for the first cook, like the guys like there was a nanny cam, so they already they haven't thought of everything, you know. Yeah, it's a good uh, it's a good point. Like they're gonna catch that every time, you know. Yeah, I mean you don't know. I mean who's gonna check? But 
Well, I guess you, know, you would check if you're afraid of uh, like break-ins and whatnot. Yeah, you know what seems uh, strange to me is like um, Jesse and Walter's kind of relationship. Yeah, it's almost like a father-son, very, very paternal. Yeah, and Jesse is like really like helpful, and he's kind of into it and everything. And, yeah, um, and he just was never like that. He was always like had his head somewhere else, or, yep. or he was like, uh, or he was doing um, meth so, himself, and yeah, or just uh, taking things under the table and selling it on his own. Yeah, he's like he seems to be like really dedicated to Walter now, and and yeah. uh, maybe it's because of. Uh, he feels guilty because he was going to kill him. And, yeah. I just but, think uh, everything they've been through, you know, maybe he's starting yeah. to wise up. He, he was always like the the outlier, the wild card kind of guy. You never know what, what he's going to expect. And now he's like, now Walt's the wild card almost. Yeah. And I I was kind of waiting for that to happen, like, see, for a few seasons now. Like, everything they've been through and they were, like, working together. And you would think at some point they would become at least comfortable around each other, you know? Right. Well, they show a few things where they, like, they stick their neck out for each other, I thought, in uh, that, like, half measures when Walt ends up uh, helping Jesse out when he's about to get in that uh, shootout. And then they have Jesse who kills Gale for Walt. So they kind of had a few things like that where they had to stick their neck out for each other. So it kind of builds up their relationship. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it just it just seems weird this season because he's always been like distant and kind of detached from everything, and and, it, and I feel and like just kind of it seems like Jesse up until this season has just been kind of like sleepwalking through everything, you know. Yep. It, it, Wall is definitely I I think he's trying to manipulate Jesse a lot. Oh, he's um, manipulating everybody. Yeah, it definitely. But it, Jesse was a most of all I thought this episode where he got into a conversation about his girlfriend. I don't know. Do you guys think he was trying to get him to break up with her? Uh, I think he was planting the seed. Yeah, he was yeah. putting doubt in his mind. I think, for yeah. sure. Just about how, like, he didn't. If he wants her to figure out, like, I guess he, I don't understand the. Yeah, go ahead. It's like he either has to tell her everything or tell her nothing. Right. Yeah. And, and, he's, and he, he knew that he would he would choose to tell her nothing and and that he wouldn't be comfortable in a relationship and. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that that makes a lot of sense, and then that like keeps Brock out of the whole situation. So yeah. I don't know. I don't. We don't know how Brock was poisoned yet, but like that whole scene with Brock and uh, oh, Walt yeah. was pretty. It was pretty intense. It was and, awkward uh, and disturbing. Like it, almost like Brock knew something. Yeah, and I was wondering if Brock had ever seen him. You yeah, know? that that was the big thing. That I guess that means that he didn't poison him, unless Brock just yeah. forgot with that whole situation of being in the hospital at all but yeah yeah i'm sure it's gonna come up in this season it was, a, it was a very awkward scene you just i didn't know what to think of like make of it like the way he just acted around him like he was so i mean kids are like that but at the same time there's like there's some like fear in his face yeah yeah i mean walt's a pretty scary looking guy too so yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah especially with the the cut on his nose and stuff but yeah i mean like the whole thing with Walt now, he's just manipulating everybody. I, I, even Marie. This episode, he's like, like the first time we see Marie, finally, you know, thank God we finally saw her. She, she's been better though. But uh, like the whole scene where he was like telling Marie about uh, the the affair, it's just like he's just like all about protecting himself now. He didn't even care about like with Skyler. He's also he's almost like he was getting back at Skyler. Yeah. No. <laughs> And he looks good, and like Skyler. Yeah. Skyler's a cheater now, and uh, <laughs> he's just piling it on. Skyler's having a, like a mess. And she's of the she's losing her mind. <laughs> she's she's she is she's breaking down. Yeah, that uh, scene where she blew up at Marie was pretty intense. I was thinking about that scene where uh, she was just screaming "shut up" over and over again. I was just thinking that you were probably loving it because you just hey, you don't like Marie that much, just screaming yeah. at Marie. <laughs> I could I see know. you doing that to Marie. You know? <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I mean, it was kind of annoying too at the same time. So it was it was pretty good though. I yeah, liked it. It was a good scene. I liked it. Just seeing like someone like put Marie down, but then again, it was Skylar, and I don't really like Skylar either. So I don't know. I'm, start, I'm starting to feel bad for Skylar. I know, yeah. me too. I mean, <laughs> she, she never really did anything wrong. You know, I mean, 
she's always like she's been annoying but again and again she's like on the she's right i mean you know he's, i mean he's selling meth and shit i know we talked meth. about the i know me and cory me and you talked about this like off podcast last week but you know that and the last scene um where I was like, that seems a little ravey. Like, it was Walt having yeah, sex yeah. with Skylar? And uh, they, were, they, they were trying to uh, insinuate that. They were? That was supposed yeah. to be rape? Oh, it, it wasn't like... It, it, it was like a... <laughs> it was rape-ish. I, yeah, rape-ish is what it, it, they would describe it. But then they, they also said they filmed another scene where she, she gives them a preemptive hand job so she doesn't get like have to have sex with them. I thought Who that was pretty that? funny. Who it was that? Vince Gilligan said this, yeah. Oh. Wow. I, I thought it was pretty funny. I just <laughs> wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> Didn't she give him a hand job in season one or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yep. It was season one. She gave him a, a handy. Wow. Breaking Bad comes full circle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm always good for an HJ on screen, but uh, that, I think, I don't know. They could have, because uh, I didn't think that was rape at all. Like or, or anything close to rape. I just figured he was kissing her. Well, no, he, there's a there's a part where he like it looks like he pulls pulls down his pants or pajamas or something. Yeah, he definitely uh, gets, like undresses. I didn't think it was like sexual though. Wait, no, I think he was. I think he was about to have sex with her, and and I think she was just afraid to do anything about it, and just right. yeah, he's she's terrified of him. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I think that's what that was at the end there, which mm-hmm. I thought was really creepy but yeah yeah um, the camera panned away just a little bit more to know like so i i think because most viewers didn't know what's going on i didn't for sure yeah but i don't know <laughs> at that point you're gonna get softcore porn and i don't know yeah. if they wanted to go down that road <laughs> right um i but, love uh, the uh the dynamic between mike and uh wall right now though especially that last scene with the money yeah that was intense yeah. Like, uh, yeah, because that's what that all that stuff about Victor. I think that's what that was about. Like he's he's saying, you know, um, uh, Mike is uh, flying too high and and taking liberties that he's not supposed to. And I think he was comparing Mike to Victor. I think that's what was going on there. I I actually thought that was um, I don't I don't know if he was directing that at Jesse because like he was trying to say. That Victor tried to cook and took like things into his own hands. He was trying to say, Jesse, don't do this, because Jesse's starting to get a hang of it, and Jesse could probably do it all by himself now. Because we've seen Jesse cook by himself right. in uh, Mexico. I don't know if that's what it was. I guess that's how I looked at it. I don't know. Well, I thought it was. I thought it was about Mike because he said, "How do you feel about the money situation?" Yeah. It, it could be. Oh, he doesn't even. Yeah, that, that, that was pretty cool. He doesn't even give a shit about Jesse's personal life right now, even though he's like he acts all concerned before, and then he just shoves it in Jesse's face, like, "Oh, I don't care about that. I want to talk about the money." Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know he was just playing Jesse, but yeah, going back to the flying co- too close to the sun. I I thought that was more directed at Mike. It could be a Jesse, but at the same time, what did Jesse do to like initiate that response? You know. I don't. I, but they have that whole reaction shot of Jesse at the end. Like, why would they? Like, why? Is it, I just I figured know. he thought that you know. I think he's starting to figure out that Walt's not all there, or he's like, almost like. He's, he's getting almost, out of control. Yeah, he's yeah. out of control. That's what I took it. I guess like, you he's, could say he's that. finally realizing it. He's turning he, into Scarface. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was a good scene where he just like completely uh, drew illusions between the two characters of a uh, Tony Montana and a uh, Walt. Yeah, Vince Gilligan actually uh, said, like, I don't remember when he said this, but he wanted the series to be like turning Mr. Chips into Scarface. So yeah. that was pretty. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, it was a great scene, and the whole thing with Skyler coming out and just, like up. realizing everything, and <laughs> you know, and then Walt says something. Wow, no one lives in this movie, you know. And then she's just thinking about what's going to happen in her life, you know, because she's basically married to Tony Montana or a Tony Montana type person. <laughs> It was definitely a really cool illusion. But going back to that final scene where uh, Jesse's, uh, his reaction, he's had like, these little reactions where he like he notices that Walt's off, but now like I think he, it's really setting in for him. And that, that closing shot they had with the garage door closing on him and then everything goes to black, I think that really, uh, I think it's trying to draw comparisons to like how like this thing is, like 
this uh, realization, I guess, is drawing over uh, Jesse now, and now he's realizing that he may not want to be latched on to Walt anymore. That's how I took it. I think yeah. I think it's, it's trying to point towards the beginning of it. I don't think it's going to happen that quickly, but um, yeah, it was definitely insinuating something like that. Yeah. I don't know. It was overall. I thought like a lot happened in this episode, and I thought it was really interesting just watching all these characters like play out. I mean, there's a lot of different character interactions between the show. Yeah, I think I think Walt might have been upset that um, when they were talking about paying uh, uh, all of Mike's guys, right? And um, and Jesse said, you know, take it out of my cut, and I don't care. And um, so that made Walt look like the asshole, you know? Right? Maybe that. Yeah, that's a that's a good point too. But um, but I still think he was talking about Mike at the end there. But I could be wrong. If it was about towards Jesse, I think that's the reason why was that right. he tried to fix the situation by himself with the paying, making Walt look like the bad guy, like you said. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely very open. I'm, I'm not, I'm not totally sure what it is. Uh, but going forward, where do we see this episode, or the season, this half season, I guess, going? Well, we found we found out um, Walt's birthday is coming up, so it's been a year since he's been. Diagnosed, know, right? So that was his 50th birthday when he started. No, this will be his 51st. So his 51st is coming up. And supposedly that flash forward they showed us was his 52nd birthday. Yep. So we almost have a whole year of time coming up soon once his birthday hits. I, this is, I guess if that if the flash forward, that's really his birthday, which I'm sure it is. Yep. Um, so um, I'm not really sure. I think there's going to be a fallout. And then, I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I have really no idea. Well, we didn't see Jesse in that scene. Granted, we didn't see anybody. But you think, if all of all people, you think you would see Jesse, and he wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a lot of things. Questions. Yeah, the, the, is everyone just dead that he knows? And <laughs> well, he did say everyone crazy. dies in this movie. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very good, very it's good something to think thing about. to point out. I mean, we got five more episodes left in this half season, uh, and they've already. Because I thought the whole first half of this first mini season, I guess, it was just going to be them setting up the business. But the business is business is set, so now they can go wherever they want with it. Yeah, yeah and you can you can see in the the teaser for uh, next week that um, uh, is it Hank, his brother in law? Yep. You know, Hank's back on the case now, and he's starting to be a pain in the ass. So that all that all that. Storyline's going to start again. That's true. Too. That's always and, like. That's been and going on um, I think I think there's just going to be a huge uh, power play with uh, with Mike and Walter. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's going to be another villain, or is it just going to be Hank? Because I mean, last season it was Gus and Hank almost. Right. I think Walt's be- being becoming the villain. Yeah, I don't see I mean, another villain like from what we've seen so far. I haven't seen another villain on the radar. I mean, it's all the characters are there. It's just a matter of watching what's going to happen. I think. I guess that would work for me because the character I feel like I'm most rooting for now is Mike, uh, yeah. especially after last episode. I just I don't know. I Mike's always been a character I like, and and I don't know. I guess Jesse sometimes is good to root for, and he's the, probably the the hero of the show if there is one right now. Yeah, but, right now um, I'd say be Jesse or Mike. I mean, even Mike is a little expendable because he's not hasn't been as such intangible as Jesse. But right. I don't know. I I just like Mike, so I, I feel like that would work out if if Wall becomes a villain, you know. Yeah, and I wonder if they're gonna come up with some kind of like competition, like someone else who's, who who, uh, or or somebody from Gus's old business is gonna come back and. Uh, but there's nobody left really, and yeah, there's just those guys in jail who are getting paid. It could. I the only people I could see having some repercussion, repercussions is the Madrigal, the German guys. I don't know. I'm sure they're going to be around again. They wouldn't just show them um, going on for investigation, I don't think, without uh, bringing in some characters or something like that. Yeah, maybe right. maybe someone who's uh, trying to keep people quiet or uh, something like that, I, I would see. I could see happening. Yeah, hard to say where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. That, that's what's good about the show. It's really Definitely. hard to pre- predict anything. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just I don't see any. I don't see them bringing in another like villain. I just I think they have the characters set, and I think they're yeah. just gonna play off what we got so far. Yeah, I th- 
I think we're eventually we're going to start hoping for Walt's downfall. You know? Yeah. Like he's going to just become so terrible that uh, it's going to be hard to root for him anymore, you know? Yep. Are you guys at that point yet? Or no. I feel like it's getting, I'm getting close. I mean, it's not like I'm rooting for him anymore. I just, lo- I just love the watching the transformation. I, I'm on board. I'm on board for the ride. Yeah, basically, yeah. That's the same, same. It's same like thing. watching uh, Anakin turn into Vader, you know. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I do, I do feel bad for uh, Skylar though. Yeah, fuck Skylar. I feel like she's, like a <laughs> she's like a hostage. Yeah, she is, but who cares? She's, she's she, <laughs> she made her bed in the first five se- <laughs> first four seasons of just being a complete bitch, and uh, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> But I mean, when he became, when he was finally honest with her and told her what he's doing, I mean, she was like helping him. She, no, you're she, right. she did the car wash, you know, she, she, uh, she, she knew how to launder the money. And I thought she was being pretty supportive, but, um, no, but she all that, got that, that stuff, uh, the, the guy that ended up, uh, breaking his neck there, um, Ted, Ted, Ed, um, all that stuff when uh, she she gave him that money, that six hundred thousand dollars to pay the taxes, and yep. that was uh, that was questionable. There, that was a reason not to like her. But uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but again, she was doing it to try to save. Yeah, her heart was yeah. in the right place. I don't know if it was the best decision, but she was trying to shield the uh, the IRS from finding out what they were doing. Yep. You know. I guess I, I, she doesn't really have any other options when it came to that point, you know? No, I think but she it, made the right call. I mean, if, if, if everything was going right with Gus, I mean, they would have made that money back real quick, but obviously things yeah. didn't turn out that way. And going back to bringing in another villain, I think if they did that, then it would get, turn into Dexter, you know? Yeah. Like every season, just another serial killer. Yeah, right. that's that's very true. Yeah, that's a good point. I just don't think they're going to, like, I think they're clever enough not to do that. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. Walt's Walt's the villain now. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have to question where Breaky Bad's going. They always they always seem to figure out the right way to go, you know. Yeah, I mean, they've never made a bad decision, really. I mean, everything's been original, I guess. You know, I mean, I guess they they did Tuco and then they did Gus, but Gus and Tuco were completely different characters. Yeah. And Gus and Gus uh, stretched across like a couple of few seasons. I think. Yeah, at least two. Yep. And so I think Tuco was like what, one and a half or something. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but they they played the two seasons like the two like storylines very differently, and I, I thought like I didn't feel like they were rehashing other stuff. But it did, if they did it again, then they'd definitely be rehashing stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I think uh, I think they're they're let it's the way they're doing it. It flows well, you know. It doesn't like you said. It doesn't seem like they have a villain per season, and yeah. And you're just waiting to figure out how they're gonna how they're gonna beat this guy, you know. And, mm-hmm. But uh, uh, it's definitely like one of the most interesting like shows I think in terms of like character development. Yeah, I mean this episode. I mean there was nothing. There were no like explosions. Nobody got killed. Nobody got threatened or anything really. Yeah. It was all very subtle. All the, but it was still crazy entertaining and fascinating. Yeah. I thought yeah, like every minute you're like my eyes are glued to the TV just like waiting for something you know or not waiting but like just like enjoying like all this like basically dialogue you know it reminded me it reminded me a lot of like the early seasons or like season one and season two when they were just getting out starting math uh, cooking math and they would right. do like the they would do the home math. Base. They would do the meth montages and I don't know what it was about them but I was I always get excited for the meth montage and, yeah and just the music and how they did it, That's and I kind of like this one as well. They, yeah, they the one, one this episode was really cool with the way that like they showed all the little chemicals like really close up and yeah. the time lapse and stuff. It looked really cool. Yeah, you know, it's not like a like the most imp- like best part of the show or anything, but I just enjoy them all the time. I don't know yeah. why. It's yeah. a cinema of attractions, I guess. Yeah, from film school, we learn these things. <laughs> <laughs> it's, everything just stops, but you're just on. You're just like watching this thing. But it, it did. It looked cool. But uh, yeah. Uh, anything else we can talk about? Um, I guess there's a few. Th- uh, do you think we figure out how Brock was poisoned before the end of the series first? 
Uh, I say before the end of the season, I think we're going to figure it out. Do, do you think Jesse figures it out? Yeah, he's definitely going to. I think that's what's going to lead to the. To con- if there is, I think there's going to be a conflict between Walt and Jesse, and I think that's going to be the spark. I guess that lights the counter. Yeah. I'm I'm guessing if if that does come to you know if that does happen, I I bet you that'll be in the last season where. Yeah, I, I was going to say I, I I was going to ask the next question. Do you think it happens before this end of the eight episodes? But I d- highly doubt it. Unless you we know, find we, out. we may find out, but without I think, Jesse finding out, yeah, yeah, right. I, I think Jesse's going to find out in the final yeah. season. I can agree. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and I mean, if I had to predict it, I think I think Jesse's the one who's going to take Walt down finally. And, but um, but who knows? Who knows with this show? Everyone could die in this uh, series, just like Scarface. You know, yeah. right? <laughs> It'll be interesting if like. Uh, and this is just like complete my imagination going wild as if like Jesse finds out about the uh, Brock poisoning and starts confronting Walt and then Walt just goes apeshit. He's like, you know what else? I uh, I basically watched your girlfriend die. I, I could have saved her. And then like everything just comes to like, every, like all all this exposition just comes like to a, a head and just like everything all in one scene, you know? And then Jesse just goes crazy and fucking kills Walt or something. <laughs> there was something else too, I, I, I think that he did to Jesse. I just can't remember it. Those are the two big ones uh the yeah. poisoning Brock, and then. <clears throat> well, he basically got. He was the reason that uh, he got the shit kicked out of him by Hank. I mean, he he knew like, he knew Walt was doing it, but. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I thought that was cool. Um, last season, when Jesse and and uh, Walt had that fight. Yeah. That was oh cool. yeah. Jesse yeah. Won, <laughs> Just like everything came out and. <laughs> um. Yeah, that was cool. I almost think that Walt's gonna kill Mike. Yeah, I think I think that's gonna happen. I I don't know how long Mike's gonna last. Yeah, but I don't know. He's definitely got Walt over a barrel with the business and stuff. Right. So I don't know how that's gonna play out. It'll be interesting to watch. I I, I don't know. I, I've I've heard that too, but I don't think I don't think it's gonna. I don't think Mike's that, that gonna die. I think Mike's in it for the long haul. I don't know why. We'll see. I mean, he's lasted this long, right? Yeah. I mean, he always yeah. seems like he knows what he's doing. I mean, he, he when that guy, when Chow called up last last episode, he's like, oh, I need to talk to you. He, he knew that. He just knew everything, you know? <laughs> he's like a Jedi. Yeah, he's a Jedi. <laughs> um, do you think this, do you think the eighth episode is going to be like a cliffhanger? Or is it just going to be like a normal? It's going to be a cliffhanger. Yeah, that's I'll what I think, too. It. Yeah, so, I think so. They're going to fuck with us. <laughs> Oh, uh, going back to the last episode at the end, they kind of got they kind of degrassied us, Colin, with the the preview. What did we th- think Where about? Ma- the- Marie was coming up to a uh, wall. She's like, "I need you to tell me everything," and then like Walt's like looks like he's about to tell. And then in this, this episode, he just came up with the whole affair thing. But that, that goes back to like the degrassy uh, previews yeah. when they like <laughs> say like the best thing's gonna happen, and then they just completely like blue ball it, you and don't give you it, anything that nothing like that even shows up in the yeah. episode <laughs> yeah it's totally out of context <laughs> it's it's not you know yeah i know i know what you're talking about i always like the Mad Men previews because they don't make any sense when you really look at them they're yeah. like they're just someone saying a phrase that's it like they can't right. you can't even put them all together yeah. and you have to guess what what the <laughs> hell they're talking about you know yeah and this is like i don't know <laughs> just they'll like, just they'll just show like don like are you kidding me yeah. or uh uh, yeah. People saying just random phrases that don't connect at all. Yeah. <laughs> or somebody would say, "I got some bad news." Yeah. You know, and that's it. And you then know. you're waiting, like, wait, so who was kidding Don all week? <laughs> right. Yeah, that's all you can think about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, yeah, the Degrassi ones were the worst, though. I mean, they'd be like, they, didn't they say like, "There's a bomb in the school" or something, and then like nothing <laughs> happened like that in the next episode. Or yeah, they, that wasn't even like the next episode on. That was like the beginning of the season, and, and like the season preview is like, "The school's gonna blow," <laughs> <laughs> and nothing ever occurs. Oh, I know what it was. We're going into lockdown. Yeah, or lockdown. Something. Uh, the school's and then, being locked down. And then like there was just like for ten minutes of the last episode, and nothing ever happened. They show like a SWAT team at <laughs> the school. I th- that's when we swore off the grassy, wasn't it? We're like, we're like <laughs> no, right, so. no more. They're just like not. They're they're. We've been uh, cheated too many times. They've tricked us too many times. We're not falling for it anymore. We're not watching this shit. 
Yeah, we could we can only take so much. Yeah. But uh, oh, now we got way off topic. But uh, yeah. So I guess we'll see you guys next week for uh, episode four of season five. Yeah. Cool. Sunday. Um, All right. Colin, did you want to talk Dark Knight right now, or? Yeah, we could do that. All right. So, uh, all right. That concludes this portion of the CNC connection. Thank you, Joe, for coming on. All right. And, Take care, uh, you guys. We'll see you Thanks, next Joe. week. Oh, I'll see you tomorrow for newsroom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. All, all right. right. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. See you. All right. Uh, all right. Here's our plugs, I guess. Uh, follow us at the CNC connection on. No. Wait. Oh, I always forget our Twitter. <laughs> uh, uh, it's. It's it's CC these I don't know. Yeah, CC it's guys. it's the same as our email. The, uh, the CC <laughs> connection at the CC connection. Yeah, right, yeah, at the CC connection. I'm sorry, I always forget if there's a the, the or not. And then g- our email um, <laughs> is the CC connection at gmail dot com. Yes. All right, ask us some questions and comment below if you're watching this on YouTube. All right, let's uh. All right, I'll stop this one, then we'll talk some Dark Knight. Dark Knight.